Hi there, everyone. Uh, Steve here. It's uh, good to be with you again on this thought uh, for Thursday. Now, I'm sure you're well aware of everything that is going on uh, in the USA at the moment with all the civil unrest uh, as a result of the, uh, the murder of George Floyd. And I just wanted to spend today's thought for Thursday just thinking through what the Bible has to say into this situation. And so what I want to do is just look really briefly at four um, bits of scripture, four, four uh, truths from scripture that can inform us and, and help us in our thinking and our own response to this situation. Uh, the first one comes in, in Luke's gospel uh, where Jesus uh, is asked a question by a, a lawyer. And this lawyer, he asks him this question. He says, uh, teacher, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replies uh, with a question. He says, well, what's written in the law? And uh, this lawyer says, well, it's to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, that's right. Go do that and you'll live. And then seeking to, to justify himself uh, a bit, the lawyer sort of says, well, ask the question rather, um, who's my neighbour to Jesus? And then Jesus proceeds to tell this, uh, this very well-known story. He says that there's a man who's travelling um, from uh, Jerusalem uh, to Jericho. And on the way, this man is, is robbed and he's beaten to, you know, with an inch of his life. And Jesus describes how a priest is walking down this road and he sees this man lying on the side of the road. And, and he crosses over and walks right by him, ignoring him, doing nothing. Jesus then says a Levite, another religious person, sees, sees this man, crosses the road, ignores him and, and walks right on by and then Jesus says, a Samaritan, someone from Samaria, sees this man and he stops. And he cares for this man and he bandages his wounds and he, he takes him to, a, to an inn to give time for him to recover. He pays for this man's stay at the inn. And then at the end of the, the, the story, Jesus asks back to the lawyer, the question is not who is my neighbour, it's, it's how do you be a good neighbour? It changes. He asks the lawyer, which one do you think was a good neighbour? And the lawyer says, well, clearly it's the, the Samaritan. See, this is really important, this, this story, in the context of where we find ourselves, because... Um, there was a massive amount of racial tension between Samaritans and Jews. You know, had that, that Jewish man uh, been alive, been, been, um, not been beaten up and been healthy, and, uh, and the Samaritan had asked him for a glass of water or vice versa, the Jewish man would have shunned him and said, no chance, I don't associate with you. And so what this Samaritan did crossed all kinds of boundaries. In a way, the, the parable should be called the, the dangerous Samaritan or the courageous Samaritan because he went above and beyond anything, risking everything really to help this fellow human being. And so race played no part in it. Second thing I want us just to, to think about. Last week, I, we did a, a thought for Thursday on uh, on isolation and why it is that we really feel it because we've been made in the image of a God who is in a community, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And because we've been made in the image of God, every single human being is equal, has intrinsic value. That's kind of comes out of that Good Samaritan passage I think Jesus is teaching in part that no matter who you are you have value as a human being I'd just like to read a portion of a, a letter uh, written by some bishops uh, in the Anglican Church of North America to their clergy in response uh, to uh, the death of George Floyd 
And it really just captures this point of equality of all. George's death is not merely the most recent evidence that proves racism exists against black people in this country, but it is a vivid manifestation of the ongoing devaluation of black life. At the root of all racism is a heretical anthropology that devalues the Imago Dei in us all. See, events like that of, of George Floyd, they they devalue humanity. He was treated less than human because of the colour of his skin. And the Bible says, no, that is not right. We are made in the image of a loving creator wherever you are from. And so we have value, everybody. Third place I just would like us to turn is uh, Galatians. Paul writes a letter to a church in Galatia. And, and he says... He says these words, writing to the church. So in Christ Jesus, you're all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now this is, for the time this was written, this is massively radical. Do you see that? That the church is a place with no racial barriers. There cannot be in God's people any attitudes of inferiority or superiority based upon our race. It's a, it's a glorious picture, isn't it? That, that we are one and united through our faith in Jesus Christ, no matter where we are from. Important to say this isn't saying we... We're called to lose our ethnic heritage wherever we may be from. We're to celebrate that. But we're chiefly identified through our relationship with Jesus. And so that breaks down any racial barriers that might exist. It's interesting. Um, it's reading uh, uh, today, actually, about Aristotle. And he, just a quote from him in his book um, called Politics, so this is written in, what, the 4th century? And he writes this, Indeed, the use made of slaves and of tame animals is not very different, for both with their bodies minister to the needs of life. And that passage from Galatians just completely confronts that view head on. Neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. We are one in Christ. Equality. Final thing I just want us to think about. It's the future. Heaven. You know, heaven is going to be a place, the new creation, where people from all nations and all tribes and all tongues and all languages unite together. It's going to be wonderful. And so in, in part, the church needs to represent that a little bit on earth. We're never going to get there entirely because it's not heaven and we're fallen. But, but that's what we need to be going for. And so how... Do we respond to all this? Well, first of all, I think we need to be deeply moved and appalled in our hearts by what has been going on to, in the particular context of black people being treated so badly by, by the authorities. We need to be appalled by that. And appalled by that because all human beings are equal and of, of extreme value. Second, we shouldn't be silent. You know, in the story of the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite, they just, minding their own business, went on and just ignored that person. It's the Samaritan who took that courageous step to do something. And so we may be called to do something. It's hard, isn't it, sitting here in Houghton on the Hill to know what we can do. But I'd encourage us to, to stand up against injustice. Third, I think we need to question and look in our own hearts. Again, uh, in the letter that I read out, a um, really important point. They write this, The racism we lament is not just interpersonal. It exists in the implicit and explicit customs and attitudes that do disproportionate harm to ethnic minorities in our country. You know, we, if we examine our hearts, I can guarantee we have some kinds of racial biases that we might not even be aware of, and we need to start thinking about that. We need to examine our own hearts on this issue. 
Finally, we, we need to pray. We need to pray for those in America. We need to pray for justice. We need to pray for a change of hearts of those who, who really do perpetrate these attitudes. We need to pray that there are hearts change increasingly to be more in line with what Scripture says and what God says through it. We just started a course at Houghton on yesterday, in fact, called Jesus the Game Changer. And our, our second session is, is all about equality and where that idea has come from and how Jesus has, has just flipped it completely upside down. And so maybe you're, you're hearing this, you think, oh, I might like to tune into that. Do, do uh, give me a, a text or a, an email. My, my details are all on, on the church website, whether you'd like to be part of that. And you can join in with that if you'd like to. But I mentioned that one of the responses we can take to this uh, is to pray. And so, let's find my phone. I am going to lead us uh, in a prayer taken uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. And it's a prayer for social justice. And if you'd like to pray along with me, then, then do feel free to do that. Or maybe just listen in uh, to the words. But let me pray. Almighty God, you created us in your own image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. And help us to use our freedom rightly in the establishment of justice in our communities and among the nations. To the glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.